So, I'm exhausted. And I spent too much time when I should have been cooking and eating dinner listening in on a, <laughs> a Libertarian Party affiliated clubhouse. I'm on there now. Um, and I also bought a business number because uh, I needed to get invited and I'm not going to give out like my number that's connected to like fucking everything I do. So I actually bought a business number today. Um, feel free to financially support this channel if you also want me to start a substat because I'd need to get a private mailbox too. I'm not telling y'all where I live. I'm not that comfortable. Um, but with that in mind, uh, I... It was it was nothing but like this weird this weird partisan sort of circle jerk kind of thing, uh, and uh, I I couldn't help but think the whole time while they were talking about you know if you're here and you're doing work uh, you're with us you know and you're you're doing a good thing and. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be fighting each other. We should be doing work. And we've been doing so much work, uh, especially uh, certain people in certain caucuses have been doing so much work. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, and I really do. I really do. I hate everything about this job. Because uh, every time I uh, make content... It's always to tell people why the the state is like a few steps ahead of them. And like <laughs> definitely going to fucking harm them. Um and generally speaking, uh one of the the ways that they do this is to try and convince people that a uh, president has their interests in heart. Well, uh, you, you remember how during the Bush era, um, a bunch of people complained about the Patriot Act, and they said that the Patriot Act itself um, was like a fascism, right? They, they, they said that Bush was doing a fascism, um, for having the Patriot Act out. And, you know, Bush was doing a fascism by having the Patriot Act out. Um, <laughs> and the left, like, and, and the liberals who lie about being the left were real super against that, right? Um, from the ACLU... Uh, the Patriot Act increases the government's surveillance powers in four areas. Record searches. It expands the government's ability to look at records on an individual's activity being held by a third party. Secret searches. It expands the government's ability to search private property without notice to the owner. Section 213. Intelligence searches. It expands a narrow exception to the Fourth Amendment that had been created for the collection of foreign intelligence information, Section 218. Trap and trace searches. It expands another Fourth Amendment exception for spying that collects addressing information about the origin and destination of communications, as opposed to the content, Section 214. And it goes on to explain some of this. Um... Well, that was considered bad. It was considered almost universally bad. And it's very fucking bad. It's extremely bad uh, for the government to be able to do all of this, especially since it's under the guise of stopping terrorism, which is a thing that they can use to get a bunch of people who at the time were fucking scared shitless because of a totally planned by somebody else um, attack on 9-11. Um, and, you know, those people, those people just, they started to get a lot more cynical. Not all of them. 
not most of them, but enough of them that the government had to change up their tactics. I did a vlog on QAnon. I did a vlog on Parler. I've done vlogs on the cathedral and all these conservative policies that very clearly um, trend people in the direction of not considering conservatives a threat. But let me be real clear here that conservatives are the biggest threat to conservatives. Because to be 100% fucking cogent, right? To be 100% factual, you got to admit that the Trump presidency is real fucking good for the deep state. I went over that in my Q rant. I went over that in my parlor rant. I went over the fact that the um the existence of Trump got them to be able to highlight like a bunch of anti-government people, anti-deep state sentiment people, people who, if they had a nudge in the right direction, might actually be either libertarians or anarchists. Uh, and they found these people, and they, they started to censor them online. And then these people were, like, frenzied. And a lot of them are boomers. They don't understand technology. They don't understand reason in this regard. And a few others, which is why they supported Trump. A reality TV guy who, like, fucked them over repeatedly in terms of promises he made and regularly, regularly expanded the state and didn't actually do anything to damage the deep state at all they got fooled and at the end of that foolery they got parlor because they still trusted conservatives they still trusted conservatives to give them a censorship free website despite people being banned from that site regularly because they didn't uh, follow the very specific and highly conservative oriented rules for what you're allowed to post there um, on a centralized site that didn't actually address the fucking problem. Um, and all this happened in an effort to circulate uh, a site that demanded your ID to uh, do silly little things like send direct messages, you know, basic features of websites, comment with links, and various other things. In order to get verified as being who you were, you had to send fucking ID with your address and your uh, driver's license number or whatever. That's dystopian. But the marched in and the people who didn't, some of them even still got swept up because the site is a shit WordPress install that didn't strip the metadata from their photos, so their photos still had the EXIF data for where they were taken if they had that feature on. And a lot of them fucking did, and we now know where they live. We now know where they were. Especially if they were throwing a tantrum on January 6th at the U.S. Capitol. But people thought, oh, you know what, now that Biden's in charge, now that I'm not doing anything for Trump, I'll be safe, you know, right, right? Um, except, like, Biden is the successor to Trump, and he's basically uh, doing the exact same things Trump did, and worse, and more. And in this particular case, I just thought I'd bring up, you know, Patriot Act 2. And I'm not remotely exaggerating or joking. Not even a little. So, let me read this to you. Remember when I said that the Q stuff and the Trump presidency and all that jive was specifically designed to create an environment where people were, you know, way too comfortable talking about their extremist bullshit and their plans to engage in it in public on unencrypted lines where they could be tracked to their identity mm. wonder what they would do with all that fucking information 
Wonder what they would do with all this information that's on places like Parlor. Wonder what they would do with the network maps that you helped them build with all of your groups and shit. Pfft, wonder what they would do. Well, Glenn Greenwald, the new domestic war on terror has already begun, even without the new laws Biden wants. Homeland Security just issued its fourth danger bulletin this year, and both the weapons and rhetorical tactics of the first war on terror are increasingly visible. The Department of Homeland Security on Friday issued a new warning bulletin alerting Americans that domestic extremists may well use violence on the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Rays Massacre. Uh, this was at least the fourth such bulletin issued this year by Homeland Security, warning of the same danger and thus far none of the fears in it is trying to instill into the American population have materialized. The first was a January 14th warning from numerous federal agencies, including DHS, about violence in Washington, D.C., and all 50 state capitals that was likely to explode in protest of Inauguration Day, a threat which did not materialize. Then came a January 27th bulletin warning of a heightened threat environment across the United States that is likely to persist over the coming weeks from ideologically motivated violent extremists with objectives to the exercise of governmental authority. That warning was also not realized. Then there was a May 14th bulletin warning of right-wing violence to attack high-capacity targets exacerbated by the lifting of COVID lockdowns, which also never happened. And now we are treated to this new DHS warning about domestic extremists preparing violent attacks over Tulsa. It remains to be seen if a DHS fear is finally realized i like glenn greenwald he puts out good content and if you don't think so sit on 10 nails like so he goes over this and this warning bulletin uh he links to a cnn article here homeland security says commemorations of tulsa race massacre could be target for white supremacists but there is no specific threat the department of homeland security issued a bulletin warning that events associated with the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre could be targets for racial violence, of course, according to a source familiar with the warning. These events probably are attractive targets for some racially or ethnically motivated <laughs> you see where this is coming um, violent extremists, white supremacists to commit violence, the Wednesday bulletin read, according to the source. There are no specific or credible threats at this time that violent extremists are planning on targeting the remembrance, according to a DHS spokesperson, who confirmed that information about the concerns was shared with local and state authorities. This is it? I'm not sure I can fucking eat this. It's a nothing burger. Ha ha ha. It's just fucking sad that anybody believes this shit. That, that, that these headlines can circulate. Isn't it? Ain't that fucking sad? Because tons of people are just gonna share the headline and say, ooh, the spooky. And then they're gonna, like, get all frayed. And then they're gonna let things materialize and justify and shit but that was the precursor to what was to come and ladies and gentlemen that is a real banger because what we got here today now is this bullshit um i i found uh, a tweet that i think relatively well encapsulates the 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 general vibe of what's being discussed, right? Um, and that tweet is by, well, it's a thread, John Robb, who says, White House's domestic terrorism strategy document is out. It's a Patriot Act on steroids. In short, it reorients Homeland Security to focus on domestic threats and unrest. It calls for new spending on expansion of domestic data and co collection and analysis, 
consolidation and sharing of intelligence on groups and individuals of interest, discovery of transnational connections, and NSA trigger, government-wide training on identifying and dealing with domestic threats, expanded online surveillance and censorship, expanded legal resources, legislative reforms, new criminal laws, screening and vetting of all DOD, Homeland Security, and law enforcement employees. He says he'll have a brief up on what this domestic terrorism strategy means later today. Um, and I'm not going to click that because I don't want to pay for his, like, Patreon thing. Um, it, it's probably worth it, but... <laughs> I don't. I, I have limited funds to begin with, and I, I want to spend them on things that can advance my bullshit. But ultimately, yeah, it's really fucking bad. And you don't even need to do that, like, because he links it. He links the national strategy. Too often over the past several years, American communities have felt the wrenching pain of domestic terrorism. Black church members slaughtered during their Bible study in Charleston, a synagogue in Pittsburgh targeted for supporting immigrants, a gunman spraying bullets in an El Paso Walmart to target Latinos. It goes against everything our country strives to stand for in the world, and it poses a direct challenge to America's national security, our democracy, and our national unity. This national strategy for countering domestic terrorism lays out a comprehensive approach to addressing the threat while safeguarding bedrock American civil rights and civil liberties, values that make us who we are as a nation. So, all the stuff that, that was listed in that thread is really in there. You should read it. You should check. I'm not going to read the entire uh, fucking 30-page brief in this recording. But, what I will say is, if you want good things for uh, non-white communities, communities that do not reflect a light strip like I do, I have that on intentionally for a reason. I think it'd be funny to be super white for this. Um, if if you if you're not like like paper like me, uh, Biden's really fucking bad for you. Um. He emboldens racist policing. Uh, he was a key author in crime bills that fuck over minorities. Uh, he exploits uh, like non-white energy in terms of like saying things like, "If you didn't vote for me, you weren't you ain't black." Like he 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 has cop Mala as as his veep. And, and just so many more spicy, tasty things. Not the least of which is that after Black Lives Matter helped campaign for him on the idea that his presidency would be better for uh, America, and specifically for black America, uh, they basically started to say that he lost their number. They weren't invited to functions. They weren't invited... They weren't called. He doesn't give a fuck. Black lives do not matter to Joseph Biden. The guy who utilized a fucking, what, what is it, magical cyclops of the triple K. I don't know. It's almost like power runs deep and some of those who work forces are the same that burn crosses. Huh? Whatever happened to that left... Oh, right, they're still here. YouTube just suppresses their content. And, and that brings me to a point here. I'm wearing my, my Young Americans for Liberty t-shirt. And I'm wearing it because I didn't want to take it off after my workout. And I don't really wear it in public anymore because I don't really like the organization and I only ever wore it to advertise my chapter. But... Other than those cynical reasons that this shirt basically amounts to nothing more than a workout tee until I wear it into the dirt. Um, because I'm not going to waste perfectly good clothing just because I don't like the organization anymore. It's not like it's a swastika. It's an eagle. So, I, uh, I still have it on for another reason, though. My posts on Facebook have recently... My old comments... This... Okay, so... 
I used to be a heavy Ron Paul supporter back in my Yal days. And that's why I have this shirt. And to be incredibly clear, one of my posts, one of my comments from nine years ago was censored. It doesn't violate community standards. I called some people anti-Paul types and said they're illogical. You're allowed to say on Facebook that you think somebody is illogical for not liking your chosen politician. I was a lot state cucky then. I regret that. Kinda. Except that it taught me how to be an asshole online, so those skills translated, obviously. But ultimately, um, I'm wearing this shirt as, as sort of a, a reminder that it doesn't matter how milk toast your takes are, they will find a way to censor you. And this bill, this 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 bullshit thing, this this fucking White House crap that they're trying to claim is to fight fucking racism. This is going to censor anyone they fucking feel like. I was already banned from Twitter because I said the naughty things about the secret societies and deep state and things. I was anti-QAnon from the start because I thought it was bullshit and a psyop. And I was anti-Trump from the start because I thought he was bullshit and a psyop. But suddenly there's a wave of Q account deletions and mine so happens to be one of them. Huh, I wonder why. It's almost like the Trump presidency was teeing up the golf ball for a massive round of censorship and increased government strength because we've got to fight all these terrible things that Trump did. Uh... Are you getting the picture yet, liberals? You were conned. You were conned by a racist, a fascist, a fucking warmonger, a deep state intelligence community shill who would have destroyed communism in the 70s. That guy. Friendly reminder that that the CIA was heavily staffed by Nazis in the beginning. Um, that so was NASA. That so are so many government institutions. That these people are not the friends of the fucking left. Friendly reminder that Biden is friends with all of them and the KKK. Friendly reminder that maybe you should look into these things and if you really want to be anti-right, you should care enough to look into these people and realize who they fucking are. Because they are not your friends. They are not your allies. They never were. And ultimately, until all of this stuff is realized, we are going to end up with ever-increasing levels of fascism like this massive new Patriot Act clone, like all the stuff that Biden is empowering, including what Black Lives Matter claims is now a worse police presence in minority communities with more military vehicles and bigger police presences. They said it was better under Trump and they're not wrong. But maybe, maybe... Yeah, Biden can be pushed left. Maybe the squad and Bernie Sanderson can fucking Kentucky fry him to the left. Maybe, but no, because it's not happening and you've had six fucking months, basically. Huh? When's that going to start? Almost like what you saw is what you got. And what you got is a big fucking schlong down your throat. Because you voted another rich old white man into power. Instead of taking the power back. Instead of smashing the state, you embolden it on the grounds that it might be able to help your pet causes. Well, how's your pet causes doing now? Seem a little dehydrated and mangy to me. Ha, ah, I just have a little bit of an issue with somebody who's behaving almost exactly like Trump being treated better than him. I just think there's a problem with that. Did you hear there's still eminent domain happening for the border wall? And that the border wall is going to keep getting... Sorry. Fence is going to keep getting built? Did you hear that the troops aren't actually leaving Afghanistan? And if anything, it's going to get worse there with lower accountability because of a bunch of fucking private contractors? Did you hear about the fucking 
huge crackdowns in terms of the intelligence community and the amount of activity and fucking play the FBI has gotten? Did you hear about the massive corporate bailouts and fucking foreign aid that went to everyone else before you got your COVID stimmy? Oh, and bombs bombing places too. Did you hear about the fact that Biden ain't no fucking better than fucking Trump and wouldn't have been because of who he fucking is? Did you hear? Is it loud enough for you yet? If not, it can always get louder. I am a cynical asshole. I spent my time in the libertarian meeting uh, basically stirring the pot and making problems for people because I, I dared to say that maybe um, people who don't put their philosophy before their politics, people who sell out their philosophy and try to get philo philosophically uh, bereft but pol politically like beneficial arrangements are probably going to get lower levels of liberty. I, I, I said that. But it applies to other people too. And it applies to them more. The Democrats and Republicans are still vastly more corrupt than the Libertarians are. Make no mistake. I made a few videos about Libertarians recently. But make no mistake. The enemy is still the people in the duopoly. And the people in the secret and deep states which help them keep their power. The ones who love Biden. Maybe if they love Biden, you shouldn't. Maybe if uh, the worst people are the ones who are siding with somebody, that's sort of like a red flag. I'm exhausted. But I think you are too, whoever you are who got to this point in this angry rant. I think you're exhausted because I think you're tired of waiting for people to save you. And you're tired of being told that you need somebody to do that. You can save yourself though. That's the thing. You can save yourself. So can everybody else. They just need to want it bad enough and not care to be called X, Y, and Z because they took what was theirs. You want racial justice? Having Juneteenth be a federal holiday ain't going to give that to you, especially since Juneteenth is part of a scam. You want to get some serious bullshit here? Let's talk about the fact that the 13th Amendment didn't actually end slavery. It just emboldened the police and prison industrial complex and laid the foundation for both to be massively racist. Because then all they had to do was create laws to make your people criminals and break up your families. Taking fathers away from their families so that they could make license plates and shit. You want to talk serious shit? Juneteenth is a scam. And until we get total state abolition, we are all slaves, but specifically also the people the state chooses to target, which are young, strong people they can put into their work camps that they call prisons. That's the reason the war on drugs is still here, despite demonstrable harm. That's the reason the war on terror is still here, because they can take things and make profit out of them, especially domestically, where they can start locking people up for terrorism when they just basically made posts online. And even people like me are getting censored. Seth, that's any sign for you that maybe this thing isn't directed toward racists and it might target anti-racist, anti-fascists like me? No matter how many magic words I say? Maybe the problem is government and they're trying to keep us divided. And maybe their facile attempts at saying that racism is over because they made something a federal holiday are bullshit. Maybe there's still a huge amount of racial injustice and you should take the power back manually.
And I understand that's not an easy proposition. I don't claim it is. When somebody tried it in Philadelphia, they bombed the whole fucking block. The Tulsa race riots specifically, the Tulsa situation was all about fucking destroying black prosperity. I just want to see people thrive. I want to see them have their liberty and their rights and shit. I have for a while now. It's why I still have my fucking stupid Young Americans for Liberty shirt. I want to see you thrive, whoever you are. But the state is always in your way. And don't ever let anybody tell you that there's a savior in any politician. Especially if they're talking about fucking Biden. That's it. That's the video. Like and subscribe. Woo, circus noises. Everything will be fine. S submit to your masters, corporate oligarchs, and everything else so that you don't get censored. Or smash the fucking...